with uh, Zanro and Miff Warhurst. Uh, they're on Zoom right now. Give them a round of applause. How are we, ladies? Oh, very well. Excited about coming back to Canberra. We bloody love Canberra. Yeah, so I'm do glad, we. I'm glad that you love it. That's good because <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, I'm coming to Canberra. Oh, no. I know. I love Canberra, I love Canberra too. It's, I mean, goodness me, it's got some of the best architecture in the world. It also has just the weirdest stuff, I think, in our country. Like we have just some really we have weird, weird street art. Weird I'll- yeah, yeah, that we spent a lot of money on. Yeah, <laughs> like the the sheep. Give me some are... examples. Like what? Oh, there's um, sheep in the city that are like presenting themselves. Yeah, um, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's in Garima Place, uh, just across from the theatre where you're yes, going to be. So you'll see them. Um, All right. Well, I'm scribbling this down, obviously. <laughs> right. Um, we have the owl in Belconnen called the Belco Owl, and it just looks like a. a Yep. Um, That's so. good. I'm looking all this up while you uh, yeah. Bill Conan out. I'm even more excited now. <laughs> oh, she's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Better than some I've seen, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep, yep. I was actually on your Instagram, uh, Zan, and do you miss a concert? Because uh, you're everywhere. And it is like I'm tired. I was tired going through. Like you were at Fred again. You were at Taylor. You were at a day on the green. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she doesn't miss any of it. It's still like so in you. It was a very tiring week. I will say that. <laughs> um, the Chemical Brothers followed by Fred again a couple of days later. But those sorts of things are unmissable, I reckon. And also, you just sort of think one day. I won't get the chance to keep doing this. So while I can, I'll, I'll still head along and do it. I don't go and see gigs as much as I used to, though, because I've got to get up early. My cat wakes me up at 6 a.m. every day. There's no way I'm going along to an 11 p.m. headliner on a weeknight. <laughs> but I still try and get out to as much as I can because, you know, one day I won't be able to. So um, make hay while the sun shines, eh? If you don't know the, uh, the Bang On podcast, it's very, very funny. It's so easy to listen to. Yeah. It's great for a drive. Yeah, and you're catching up on all your sort of pop culture stuff without having to really sit and read. And also, it's great for me, who I find that unless someone's like shoves something in my face, to learn about new music, it's really hard to do these days. Yeah. And a lot of the heavy lifting's done for me, which yeah. I love and I appreciate. <laughs> but what I wanted to know from you both is like, what do you think about the TikTok generation and how that's affected music? Because there's so many songs that I'm like, hang on, this is a big song. And people are like, no, it's been out for years mm. on TikTok. Uh, look, I think it has huge positives and huge negatives. The, the huge positives are that quite often a song that comes from absolutely nowhere that no one has ever heard before gets picked up and becomes a global hit. And it's a way for somebody to break through coming from nowhere and and in a way with the old record company system that approach had disappeared you just mm. weren't going to hit it and and have a huge hit so that's exciting and it means the artists are really interesting and come from places you wouldn't expect and the other good thing is the old songs that get resurfaced and played and and all of a sudden the kids are really into it i love that as well however the problem is now that it's being monetized Quite often, you know, the pressure is on to make a song that works for TikTok and not everything works for TikTok and not all artists are like that. So it cuts out a whole lot of other musicians that aren't great on socials or, or don't have something that would work in that capacity. And I think I think we're, we're yet to find that the, if, if, it's, if it's great. I think that people probably see the Taylor Swift and how many people are going to that concert, you know, 96,000 or whatever on one of the nights for Melbourne and they go, oh, well, that's just what all musicians are doing and getting. And it's like, no, no, there's a bunch that are still like clawing their way up and just trying their hardest and they're not the Taylor Swifts and you've got to like support that still. Well, my yeah. my hope from something like that is that Taylor Swift is what we call a gateway drug for yeah. all these young girls who will hopefully then start looking around and seeing yeah. that, that music can bring community, it can bring pleasure, it can bring, you know, it, it, it opens your eyes, it heightens your awarenesses, it, it, it opens the world up for you. And I, I feel like once you've had a taste, I mean, we all remember our first concert and this was a first concert for so many <gasps> so young many. people, predominantly girls. Um, once that door's open, you can't shut it. No. It's over. You're, you're in a whole new world and it's wonderful. Like me with human nature. Oh, and me with Hilary Duff. <laughs> <laughs> Great first concert. <laughs> All right, if you want to get tickets, obviously they're just a great chat. And if you want to go see it live, you can. CanberraTheatreCenter.com.au. They're going to be here Friday, April 12th. So it's a Friday date night. Yes, love that. Oh, and my God, yes. You make a little foursome yes. with Santa Myth. Uh, thank you so much for joining us.
Thanks, Wilco and Courts. Thank you, Mark. Lovely to see you and see you in Canberra. Wilco.